Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to my podcast, Rewire to Inspire. I am your host, Jessie Brown, and I am so excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 122. If you missed Tuesday's episode, it was all about how to talk yourself out of anxiety. It was probably one of my favorite episodes that I've ever recorded thus far, and I definitely encourage you guys to check out that episode after this one if that title sounds like it resonates with you. Although I do think that there are pieces of it that could really support and help anybody on their mental health and life journey. Today for episode number 122, we are going to be chatting about something that I have been guilty of my whole life. And the unfortunate truth is I think a lot of us are guilty of this. And that is, are your standards too low for yourself? Okay, what does that mean? This means so many things because it can really hit and tailor to different areas of our lives. However, I want you to ask yourself, are you somebody who typically lowers the bar in life for what you feel you're worthy of? Whether that is a partner, whether that is a job, whether that is money, whether that is an environment, a friendship, whatever. Are you somebody who typically would rate yourself as somebody who is unworthy of having the best, greatness, optimal fulfillment, exactly what you actually want, but don't think you're worthy of it? Are you somebody who typically lowers the bar? Are you somebody who typically goes to the worst case scenario because you don't want to get yourself too excited? You don't want to get your hopes up right? How many of us do that, right? We, we get our hopes up and then something doesn't go the way that we planned and we feel really icky or we feel like crap and then we beat ourselves up and we think we're not worthy, we think we're not good enough, etc. And then our self-worth takes a hit. So I want you to ask yourself, are you somebody who typically does any of those things that I just mentioned? If you are, I encourage you to stay tuned. If none of that resonated with you, I still encourage you to stay because it might be helpful. But I encourage you to ask yourself, if not, why not? What is it that is helpful for you in those moments? And again, this is all something that is built over time and or something that we've inflated, meaning that we have these protector parts of us. So we can have a protector part of us that's like, no, like I can get whatever I want. I deserve anything. I deserve the best. And it's almost, it it typically stems from a distorted sense of ego in a way almost when we don't have the accurate results to really back up those thoughts. But in reverse, we can have a really distorted lack of self-worth where we feel like we're not worthy of anything. And so it's really this spectrum. So I want you to rate yourself zero to 10 where you're at in the spectrum. Are you someone who's overly optimistic and thinks that everything you deserve everything? And again, none of this is said negatively, but I want you to really get accurate of where you would rate yourself. Are you super high on this or are you super low in the way that you always undervalue yourself, you undersell yourself, you think that you're not worthy of much? Zero to 10, I want us to start by you writing where you're at. Me, two years ago, and I always say two years ago and I feel like I need to preface because that's really when I started to begin fully diving into self-improvement and personal development. So that's why I always say around two years ago. Two years ago, I probably would have rated myself, um like a four. I'd say I was probably a four. Now, I think I'm probably a seven or an eight of where I would rate myself, knowing that I know what my worth is and I know what I've worked towards. However, 
I want to come from this from the lens of there are still times that my standards are way too low for myself of me thinking that I'm only worthy of or I'll only attract or I'm only good enough for mediocre level jobs or money or partners or friendships, whatever, because that's all I've known. And so that's what I think I'm worthy of, right? We often attach our worthiness to what we've surrounded ourselves with. And so I wanted to give you guys an example of a time that I have done this in my life. And I want you to begin to think for yourself of a time that you've done this for your, your life where you've lowered your standards. So this would have happened in 2018 or 19. I can't remember. But I had two interviews for two positions and I had recently graduated from my, you know, studying social work. And I think at this time I was working at a local homeless shelter in Fort McMurray. And so at the time I was applying to two other jobs. I was ready to just advance what I was doing and to just kind of shift the lens of work that I was doing a little bit of social work is a lot of kind of shifting the lens in which you're working. And so I had an interview with two different jobs, one of which was one that I really, really, really wanted, which was at an agency called, um, oh my goodness, they changed their name, North Peak, no, Northreach. Oh my gosh, if I, <laughs> I'm just so disappointed in myself, you guys. I wrote Northview down and I'm like, that was the name of the apartment I lived in. That's not it. Northreach was the name of it. They used to be called HIV North and they changed their name to Northreach. Oh my gosh, that's kind of self-embarrassing. And then the second interview I had was a job that I, it was at a local daycare, which was something I was open to doing, but I wasn't like, I really want to do this. And I knew that I really, really, really wanted the one at Northreach, like really bad. It has, it was where I did my practicum. It felt in alignment. It's what I wanted to do, but I really self-sabotaged myself in a way of after I had completed those two interviews, my mind instantly went to, don't get your hopes up. You're probably not going to get it. You're probably going to have to settle for the one at the daycare. Um, somebody better is probably going to be interviewed. You know, you don't know as much as they did, probably. No idea who that other person was, but you know. And I just kept telling myself all the reasons why I wasn't going to get the job that I really wanted. Even though in the back of my mind, I knew I had direct experience at that workplace, seeing as I had done my practicum there, I had connections there, I had done the work, I had the right credentials. And in hindsight, looking back, I actually did amazing in my interview. But because I didn't want to get my hopes up, I self-sabotage myself. This is something that we typically do as a protector to not get hurt. Because if we portray confidence, and we own something and we're like, you know what? I crushed that and I'm probably going to get it. And then we don't get it. We often get embarrassed. We get let down. We get shameful. And so the goal of this episode is for you to recognize how much are you lowering your standards in your life? Because it is a very toxic thing to have. Instead of me saying, I'm probably not going to get that job because I suck and I'm going to have to settle. What I could have said is I gave it everything I had. I have all my ducks in a row and I have everything I need. If I'm chosen, I know that I was supposed to do this. And if I wasn't, it wasn't right for me right now. And I need to trust that. How often are you self-sabotaging yourself and settling to avoid, I guess, increasing your standards? Because I think a lot of us do that all the time. We lower our standards because we don't believe it's possible. We don't believe it's possible for us. We don't believe we're worthy enough of whatever it is that we're going for. So a question I want you to contemplate is, where do you most often find yourself lowering your standards? Or is your tendency in all situations to keep your expectations low to avoid disappointment? Where are you at with this? Is this typically something you do with partners? Because I've done that in the past before too, where if I got asked on a date with somebody and I knew in hindsight, I wasn't like super into it. Part of me was like, well, nobody else is asking you on a date, so you should probably just say yes. That is a toxic thought to have. That is now closing the door to any other potential opportunities, as well as opportunities to continue to work on myself to attract my dream aligned partner. We do this all the time. It's almost like we take what we can get because we think that's all that's available. It's that scarcity mindset of, I don't see any other options, so I'm just going to take what's here in front of me. 
We got to stop doing that. You guys, we have to stop lowering our standards and build our worth. We have to know what our worth is accurately so we can scale accordingly. And if your self-worth is lower right now, I can pretty much guarantee you that by surrounding yourself with other things that make you feel less worthy, it's going to take a hit. Whereas if we took that time to instead reinvest in ourselves, work on ourselves, work on our self-worth and attract more opportunities and people, things and ideas that can raise our self-worth, we will be attracting things that are more in alignment instead of just taking what we can get in a way. And I've been guilty of this. And so I want you to know that you're not alone. And this mindset almost always stems from the past, you know, from experiences where your worth has taken a hit, experiences where you've been shown that that's all you deserve in, the, in, in an experience before. And so I want you to know that if you do this, it's likely just a part of you that feels like that's all it's worthy of getting. So I kind of broke down some things that could be happening here, why this happens in a way. So we typically lower our standards because we want to avoid anxiety or pain. We suppress how we really feel with toxic and negative thoughts to avoid getting let down again. So I encourage you to think of a time right now in your life where you've maybe done this to yourself. You've lowered your standards. You've said yes to something when you really didn't want to. You took the lesser of two options because you felt like that's what you deserved. You know, you didn't shoot for the stars because you didn't think that you would land there. Whatever it is, think of a time where you've really lessened your potential, your worth, your intelligence, everything. Think of a time that you've done this. And know that, again, this is a protector part of us that is trying to keep us safe, even though another part of us likely strongly disagrees. During that time with that job where I kept diminishing my worth, there was also part of my brain that was going, mm, I actually think you're a great fit. And I think that should you keep working hard and keep studying and keep learning and evolving, eventually you will get this position. I know exactly what it's like to not know where to turn, to feel alone, helpless, and stuck. My goal as a coach is to help clients from a trauma-informed perspective see your worth and develop self-belief so you may chase your dreams and trust your intuition to live the most aligned, fulfilling life possible. If you're looking to elevate your life to the next level but aren't sure where to start, I would absolutely love to connect. If you're feeling pulled or curious, please use the link in the show notes below to book your free call. I look forward to connecting and supporting you on your own unique journey. And so we always have like that de devil and angel on our shoulders, right? Those two sides of us almost counter arguing. Which one are you allowing to control you? Because although yes, it's relevant to have those thoughts that are toxic in a way, because in a way they get our button gear. If we feel like we're not worthy of something because we haven't done the work, in a way we have the option in that moment to either get to work and figure it out or accept it as it is and know that if that's the thoughts we're going to tell ourselves, that's going to shape our belief. If we keep telling ourselves we're not smart enough for this job, but we don't go and learn the things to get the knowledge to get better, that's on our own accord. That falls on us. You have the choice in that moment. But I want you to think about where you most often do this. Again, I'm guilty. I'll put my hand in the air. I've done this with partners. I've done this with friendships where I'm like, this is the only friend that I can get. So I might as well keep them around because I don't want to not have friends and want to be lonely. Right. But it's like, wouldn't I rather not have friends than have friends that make me feel lonely and wait until I'm able to attract those that are going to be in alignment? We all do this and we all do this, especially those of us that have low self worth when we don't think we're worthy of any better. Little Jesse felt this. Adult Jesse felt this. I am now at a point now where I'm like, enough is enough. I'm done just allowing mediocre things in my life, like things that could fit what I'm looking for, but aren't like really the perfect fit. I'm not allowing them to even come into my energetic circle anymore because it's in a way it's a waste of time. It's not worth it. Where are you doing this in your life? If you are someone who likes to be in control, control of situations, control of outcomes, you have to know that that is also a coping mechanism. So when something is out of your control and you start to catastrophize, so like that job, for example, that decision after I left was out of my control. I had done everything that I could. And catastrophizing comes from the belief that by 
really imagining what might go wrong, we're able to prepare ourselves for the worst possible outcome. I remember after that interview, I was like, I don't think I got it. I remember calling my mom saying, I don't think I got it. Here's why. And then I just kept reiterating to my mind all the reasons in which that was okay that I didn't get it. And I was like painting a fake story of how I was going to be so happy doing this other job. And I do just want to say in, in hindsight, I ended up getting both of the positions. So I was able to choose. And I, of course, chose the one at Northreach that was most in alignment. But I kept painting this fake picture for myself of how I'm going to be okay with not getting the job because I have these other options. Even though part of me was like, that's such bull crap. You are not going to be happy unless you get this position. Here's why. We all do that. We paint these fake personas of what we think is going to make us happy just to give ourselves an excuse of why we shouldn't try harder. Where are you doing this? We all do this. There's still areas of my life that I do this, you know? So the thing about this is that we can improve how we approach lowering our standards. We can improve how we talk to ourselves. We can improve our outlook on how we respond to these things in life. The first thing that we need to do is look at our self-worth and notice where we're at with that. And a great place to start with this is to notice how do you talk to yourself daily, how you talk to yourself, how you communicate, what are the things you tell yourself about yourself, what do you tell yourself when you look in the mirror, what do you tell yourself when you're working, what do you tell yourself when you're around other people. Notice how you talk to yourself. Is there often a negative bias? Are you often shrinking yourself down to make everybody else feel comfortable? Are you shrinking yourself down so that you feel like you fit in? Are you shrinking yourself down to avoid getting hurt? Where are you at with having a negative bias of self? Are you someone who constantly is just taking a self-worth hit, a cred hit, lowering yourself? Like I am so guilty of this beyond measure, you guys. It's not even funny to the point that it's been extremely detrimental in the past and I've had to very consciously and still working on this to this day. Still to this day, I'm chronically working on raising my self-worth because for so long in my past, it was absolute hot garbage. It was terrible. I had none. Everything I told myself was negative. Friends I surrounded myself with were honestly some of the most toxic people you can imagine. Partners I accepted into my life were toxic, but I just thought that's all I was worthy of. Some jobs that I had, the way people talked to me, I just accepted it because I thought that that's how it was. No, you guys, those things aren't how it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to be treated like crap from external people or in our own brain. We have to be willing to recognize where our standards are at with this, how much we advocate for ourselves, and how much we know we can have and deserve better. That is really what this is about. And the other thing is, is that if you know that you're working hard, you know that you're giving something all you have, you know you're trying to become the best version of yourself, you know you're trying to heal, you know you're just trying your absolute darnest to be your best self, and you begin to trust your intuition, that is really the recipe for guiding you towards a more holistically fulfilled life. We have to be willing to know that we are accountable for half of the equation. We are responsible for advocating for ourselves. In those toxic friendships and relationships, it was my responsibility to remove myself from them. But I hung around for a while because again, that's all I thought I was worthy of. Toxic jobs I had, I stuck around because that's all I thought I could get. Paid good, right? We come up with all these excuses, you guys. When we stay in places that are out of alignment, we're not allowing things that are in alignment to come into our orbit. We're not allowing ourselves to see that other potential could exist. It's nobody else's responsibility but our own to change that. That is why now I refuse to get into another relationship, intimate relationship or friendship that does not make me feel like I can be my 100% self, I can feel my best self, somebody who pours into me, not drains me, I refuse because I've done it time and time again thinking I need to be in a relationship for society's expectations. I need to have all these friends in order to look cool. No, I would rather have zero friends, no relationship and be in alignment with myself 
than to be surrounded by people that make me feel like garbage. What is this like for you? How does it resonate with you? Are there people, things, circumstances, habits in your life that make you feel like you are not able to be your best self that you truly know in your your gut are meant to be? If you are surrounding yourself with those things, you need to know that that is your choice. You are the only one that can make the decision to remove yourself from those things or to communicate, leaning into vulnerability of what that is in, how that is impacting you. This one is a little bit harder for me to talk about this episode because I am still very much actively in this headspace of working on this for myself. And I need to be transparent about that with you guys. The last episode I did on Tuesday, I had a little bit easier of a time because that's something that I feel I've kind of gotten ahead of. Whereas this topic is something that I'm still guilty of. I have a very hard time speaking my truth. I have a very hard time standing up for myself. I have a very hard time knowing where my worth is going to, you know, align with people. I have a hard time knowing who's going to accept me and who's not. Because for so much of my life, I've just been battling with people not understanding me, not getting me, not accepting me. And from an outside perspective, people are probably like, oh, you got it all together. You have a podcast and you have a business and you have all these things and it's so great. And it's like, yeah, that's awesome. However, how I'm feeling on the inside is often a lot of pain and a lot of hurt because of my past experiences. However, that is why I'm now more than committed than ever in my life to hyper focus on my own happiness and my own worth and never lowering that bar again. That bar is never to come down again. If anything, as I grow and evolve, it's going to get higher and more sturdy. Where is that bar for you? Is it flimsy? Does it go back and forth? Does it change where it's at depending who you're around? We need to find a homeostasis state and stick to it and put our foot down and say, this is what it is. And know you're worthy of that. People will say, oh, you think you're, you're better than us and you're so good and whatever. It's like, let people talk. Because people that tear people down and lower your self-worth is often people that have inflated egos, inflated self-worth, and are trying to tear you down because it makes them feel good. I promise you, friend, being alone and at peace is better than being at a job, in a relationship, in a friendship, whatever, that makes you feel not happy. Life is too short to lower your bar. Life is too short to not have high standards for yourself. That is one of the biggest thing that I see, especially with women, is our standards are just so damn low. We need to rise them, but we need to rise with them. We need to practice what we preach. We need to know that we can only attract in which we are. So we cannot expect something of other people if we are not actually following through with that. We cannot expect kindness from everybody if we are spreading toxicity we have to be willing to be a mirror for what we want to attract in our life. And so if you are lowering your bar, know that yes, it is a coping strategy. It is a way to talk ourselves out of getting our hopes up, which is likely something we've done in the past to protect ourselves. However, know that that is only hurting yourself. It is hurting your worth of knowing that you are deserving of the things that you work towards and you deserve to tell yourself those kind thoughts. Know that if you work your ass off towards something and you don't get it, that does not mean that you are a bad person. That just means that maybe that wasn't meant for you and something else is. Instead of it discouraging you, view it as a way of trying to get better. What do I need to shift to get better? The last position that I didn't get was one that I really, really, really wanted. And I asked the person interviewing me that told me I didn't get the job. What was it about me and the successful candidate that would have made me the better candidate? And I'll point blank ask that question and be open to feedback, open to getting better. I think a law, a large part of setting our standards is being willing to accept critical feedback from those who are ahead of us so that we can get there. So today's episode is a little bit all over the place in a way because this encompasses so many areas of our life that we do this because we do this in relationships we do this with jobs we do this with ourselves in our own brain on a day-to-day basis 
We do this even with the foods that we eat. Oh, I'm not worthy or I don't think I need to nourish my body today. We just have all these toxic thoughts for ourselves, right? And so I want you to accurately scale for yourself, zero to 10, where are you at with your self-worth? Where are you at with setting the bar and where you need to pivot? Because if anything in your life came up as a red flag of this is not fully in alignment for me in my life, focus on that. Focus on either improving that, getting that out of your life, or leaning into vulnerability to have an open conversation if that is in alignment for that thing, whatever it is. But if something is coming up and you're like, like this person has been kind of a red flag for me for a while, dissect why that is. Dissect how you feel after you hang out with that person. Why is it you're sticking around? Is there a fear of being alone? Is there a fear of hurting them? Is there a fear of rejection? Whatever it is. Being curious and knowing that the only way that we can live the most aligned life is to know what our values are, to know what our beliefs are, and to know what our standards are and to measure them accordingly and accurately. So if you are needing support with this, although I, again, the first to admit that I struggle with this big time, I definitely feel like I have a good grasp of being able to identify the things that are out of alignment. We call them bugs in the garden being able to identify them to slowly get them out of your life because I promise you on the road to your greatest potential, there's going to be blocks. There's going to be challenges. How you respond to them is how close you are able to get to your higher self. Don't allow them to block you from your true potential and know that you are the only one responsible for getting those blocks out of the way so that you can continue on your own unique, beautiful journey. So. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning into episode 122. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you are struggling with this, again, my link is below to book a free 30 minute call. I'd absolutely love to connect with you all. And I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful week. Happy May. And I look forward to chatting with you all next week. Bye you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewire to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.